I did with Lisa Leslie about Kobe Bryant. And I know that if I had only seen the clip that you saw, I'd be extremely angry with me too. I am mortified, I'm embarrassed, and I am very angry. Uh, unbeknownst to me, my network put up a clip from a very wide-ranging interview, um, totally taken out of context, and when you see it that way, it's very jarring. It's jarring to me. I didn't even know anything about it. I started getting calls. What the hell are you doing? Why did you say this? What is happening? I did not know what people are talking about. So I've been told, or I've been advised to say nothing. Just let it go. People will drag you. People will troll you. It'll be over in a couple of days. But that's not good enough for me because I really want people to understand what happened here and, and how I'm feeling about it. I reached out to Lisa because I know that she's a longtime friend of Kobe's to talk about his legacy and their friendship. We had a really wide ranging interview, talked about many things, his career, his passion, his sense of humor, the way he was mentoring other people, how he was starting his next chapter. It was wide ranging. And yes, we talked about that court case because that court case has also come up. And I wanted to get Lisa's take on it as a friend who knew him well, what she thought, where that should stand. And I thought she, it was very powerful when she looked me in the eye as a member of the media to say it's time for the media to leave it alone and to back off. During the course of the interview, I asked follow-up questions because I wanted to make sure that her position and perspective were very clear. And at the end, when she said, it's time for, to leave it alone, I, as I said, I thought that was powerful. And I insisted, I insisted that that part be in the interview because I thought that it put a nice button on that part of the conversation. Um, when the interview aired, we got a great reaction to it. Um, I talked to Lisa last night. I believe that Lisa was okay with the interview. And I felt really good about the interview, really good about the interview. So for the network to take the most uh, salacious part when taken out of context and put it up online for people who didn't see the whole interview is very upsetting to me. And that's something I'm going to have to deal with with them. Uh, and we will, there will be a very uh, intense discussion about that. I also want to say this. I have... Um, been with Kobe Bryant on many social occasions. Uh, he was very kind and very warm to me, and I felt that we had a friendly relationship. I, too, am mourning his loss, just like everybody else. I still am shocked by it. It's tragic and untimely, and the last thing I would want to do is disparage him at this particular time. And I, I, I hope people understand that. And that's why I'm taking this time to speak to you directly. I've never done one of these before. I didn't even... I, I've never done one of these before, but this was so important to me that I felt I had to say something. I don't want to sit up on a set and read a prepared remark. Uh, I wanted you to hear exactly where I'm coming from and how I'm feeling. And to let everybody know that no disrespect intended. And now I've got to go to work. Uh, I don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow One Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get eighteen percent off. We out. All right, you seen in the video, Gail King basically explained what happened in the Lisa Leslie video about her Kobe Bryant bringing up Kobe Bryant's rape allegations that were thrown out. I mean, what was that two thousand three? Let's talk about it. We back Goodfellow Sports TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video, and basically she said, you know, it was on CBS. And they took it out of context and, you know, the clip out of context to make her look bad. Now, do you have situations where that happens? Yeah. You know, you can get a whole interview and somebody can say something and they edit it the way some, you know, the way they want to edit it to make you look bad, but don't show the rest of the interview. So at the end of the day, you know, that can't happen, you know, but that, but it's, you shouldn't even ask that question. You know what I'm saying? Now, if she came on and said, well, CBS told me to ask the question 
And, you know, I asked the question, you know, because my bosses told me to ask the questions and, and that's why I did it. Then maybe people can, you know, understand it a little more or a little bit better. But let's talk a little bit more about it. We back. Goodfellas Sports TV. Make sure that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Uh, for more music entertainment videos like this, check my music entertainment playlist. You won't be disappointed. But, you know, people are not going to buy it. And she said, well, they told me that people is going to forget, ignore the trolling, and ignore the comments. But it's hard to ignore the Internet when it's a habit. You know, when you pick up your phone and you just you it's second nature to you and you looking, you know, you looking at stories and, you know, you might be a guy checking the, you know, the the, the scores or you might be Gail. She might be checking, you know, whatever she's checking for. She might be going on, you know, uh, Amazon or she might be looking to shop or, you know, whatever, you know. And she just might be searching through TMZ and Essence and stuff of that nature. And she see, you know, people calling her a raccoon. She see people throwing, throwing dirt in her name. It's hard to ignore it for somebody that's, I think she's 65 years old. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that identifies as being a black woman is now getting stripped of her dignity, her integrity. And now, you know, people are throwing her in the mud from Snoop Dogg to Boosie to, you know, countless other, you know, even women that are feminists. You don't see anybody defending Gail King on this one. All right. Is it her job to ask the tough questions? Absolutely. But you got to have some type of spine. You can't be spineless at 65 years old. And most of the women I know that's that old, they don't give a hell no more. They have fart in front of you. You know, do do whatever. They they say what they want to say. When when my experience with women, when they old, they say they have no filter. They say what they want to feel. They live their life. So for Gil King, even if they put a pistol to the back of her head and say, ask the question, she should have been com she shouldn't have been comfortable with it. like I ain't doing it. I'm 65 years old. You know what I'm saying? I live my life. You know what I'm saying? I, I I've done everything you asked me to do. I can't ask that question. But what you know? She says. You know, they said it'll go away. And eventually, the black community, that's the thats the play on the black community. That's the narrative. They'll be mad at Gucci for a minute. They'll be mad at, you know, um, um, Prada for a minute for the blackface. They'll be mad at Kanye for a minute. They'll be mad at Jay-Z over Kaepernick for a minute. They'll be mad at the NFL over Kaepernick for a minute. And eventually, they're going to forget. They're going to get amnesia, and they're going to be back spending their money with Gucci. They're going to be back spending their money with Jay. They're going to be back. They're going to forget about Kaepernick. They're going to be back on the Gayle King bandwagon, and that's an accurate depiction of the black community. You know, when Trayvon Martin died and Mike Brown and the dude, they got choked up in New York for the cigarettes, you know, and, you know, where all this brutality going on, police brutality going on. Up there in Minnesota, the dude, they got shot, you know, at his, you know, bachelorette party, you know, out there in New York. You know, black people forget very, very quickly. They can forget about it. If Gail do a great interview down the line with, I don't know, um, you know, uh, Christy Teague, John Lynch's wife, or she do a great interview with Jay-Z or something, people going to forget about it. Black people always forget and forgive. You know what I'm saying? So that's what they tell me. Oh, those people are going to, they're going to forget Gail. It's, it's not that big a deal. Just Go get on the internet. Somebody else gonna do something, and and they're gonna talk about that. They're gonna forget about you, gal. We're not gonna lose no viewership. But they used her for clout. They used her to get them ratings up. You know what I'm saying? Now everybody talking about CBS News now, and now it's circulating. Not just you know NBC, Fox. Now they got the the new media talking about not circulating. It's trending. It's getting hits on YouTube, and you know Gail King was used as a pawn. But you know, is people gonna accept her apology today? No. Too late for that. You know what I'm saying? When people eventually move on from it? Yes. Did she hurt herself by doing this? No, she didn't hurt herself. You know what I'm saying? Did she believe the backlash the way it is? Like she said in the interview, like her little stream on Instagram? No, she didn't believe it was going to be like that. They took a partial clip of her accident. accident. And she was like, you know, well, um, people start talking about me and about the interview and Lisa didn't have a problem with it. And you know what? At the end of the day, you know, when you got the, uh, the, the, the lady from Disney talking, she bringing it up and, you know, you got all these other, you know, uh, people that's bringing it up. You got the Aerie Shafir, whatever the comedian bringing it up. People are already angry that they making this synonymous with this man legacy. And he, and it was thrown out in a part of the question where you was like, you know, it was thrown out, but the, the witness didn't want to, 
um, um, testify and you didn't bring up it was seven different semens in her panties that Kobe wasn't the other one, only one. So no, you're going to live with this. This is going to stay in your legacy. You know, this is going to be part of you. You just like Oprah and Oprah out here doing the same thing. Oprah didn't help, didn't help, didn't hurt, didn't help you neither. You being cool with Oprah didn't help. And she was doing, she doing, and you didn't ask Harvey Weinstein these questions. Just take your L and continue to do what you're going to do. You on the, you on the, uh, you whitelisted right now. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out to the email. If you have a business question, inquiry, response, shit, video request, once again, check out music entertainment playlist for more videos like this. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at TheHellblaze.com. Use the promo code GoodFellow1Boxing. Get 18% off the 100% all natural products. Check them out. Black owned, really good people, website.